Hi everyone and welcome back to Halley Handle HD. And today I thought I would take a look at the two Hitman films. For some reason, uh, I haven't actually made a video on this. Um, and I was thinking to myself, why haven't I? Because these are, you know, this is a franchise, a game franchise, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. Uh, I've played every single one of them since they came out. And um, I've watched both films. And, you know, I've, I've quite liked them. Um... So what I thought I would do today is make a comparison between the Hitman movie with Timmy Fjolfin that came out in 2007 and then the uh, the remake that came out in 2014 with uh, Rupert Friend. Um, so I wanted to talk a lot about both, talk about what I liked about both and what I liked but I didn't like about both, um, talk a little bit about the different villains we had, talk about both Timothy and Rupert's portrayal of uh, 47 and then give them overall rating. So we'll start with Hitman, the original Hitman movie. Um, I thought Tel Timothy Olyphant played a really interesting character because one thing that the director Xavier Jane Jane's did was he took away the clone aspect of the film, um, which I thought was really a really sort of um, bold move to do because if we think about the Hitman the Hitman game franchise, obviously he's supposed to be a clone. So to see him as an actual human being, um, but just void of human emotions to a certain extent, because you know he sort of progresses feelings later on uh, for Nika, where that's you know just platonic relationship or or, or what we don't really know because he doesn't really reveal a lot. But so yeah, I thought the first thing was um, quite a bold move uh, in the sense of taking away a part of his origin story. Um, I quite liked. I quite liked how it was um, centered around St. Petersburg originally, then we moved to like Morocco, things like that. I thought that was really cool. Um, it kept a good format of the of the game. I thought to to a degree, like he wasn't he wasn't necessarily getting handed out contracts as he did in the games, but uh, what we had was a good sort of like sort of more like what we see with Hitman Absolution as a game. Like we don't really. We see him more sort of not doing a contract, doing a contract. It's more of a storyline. Um, I thought that the Belikov uh, villain was a good villain. Um, I liked the whole, the whole sort of background that they had there with uh, you know the political stuff um, and all that sort of thing. That was that was quite interesting, and um, the sort of Dougie Scott's portrayal as the guy who's chasing Forty Seven. I thought that was handled really well as well. So overall, I thought it was good. Certain things about the game transition to the movie could have been done a bit better. I would like to have seen a clone origin story, which we get with uh, Rupert Friends Hitman, which we'll we'll get to later. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought like it was tastefully made. There was a lot of interesting comparisons with the game and with the film. There's some scenes like the scene where where Forty Sevens and um, in Morocco in the, um, the restaurant and he's sort of walking towards the toilets and the camera pans behind his head and he's sort of walking in that sort of video game character style mode. I thought that was really interesting. Um, we see him utilise disguises a lot. Uh, we see a lot of like silent kills. We see a lot of interesting interactions with other agents too. Um, uh, so yeah, so, so overall I thought that the original, 40, the original Hitman movie was a good precursor for what we get with 47 film with the 47 film um i do like i do like how we kept it slightly more uh video game based like 47's character uh rupert friend's character rupert friend's 47 character was a genetically modified clone um different aspects there were with uh him and uh katia uh, combining and also with uh, Agent Smith being the main villain, which I thought was really interesting because, as we know in the games, Agent Smith is like a friend for Forty Seven, or not really a friend, more like an ally. So to see him um, being the sort of main villain and almost being powerful, more powerful than Forty Seven, proves a different challenge as well. Um, the the other one, there was a lot more action, which I wasn't really a biggest biggest fan of. I mean, we all know that Hitman is supposed to be a silent film, 
but you know, silent assassin, so he's supposed to be doing things quietly as possible. Although not to say that the, the original film didn't have its own action moments because it did. Um, but I felt that there was just a lot more action in the original in the the newer film. But there was also quite a lot of good scenes with the um, disguises and trying to avoid detection and things like that. Just not just not as much as the original film. Um, the villain. So I think as well we will look at the villains. So. If we have to do a comparison, Belikov in the original film versus Agent Smith, I think Agent Smith wins because Agent Smith actually does all does the stuff himself, whereas in 47, uh, the original Hitman, sorry, uh, there was a lot of uh, Belikov sending out some other guys to try and uh, thwart 40, 47, although we did get to see a lot of the, the other agents trying to take down uh, 47, which was quite cool. Um, but yeah, the, the point goes to Rupert's uh, antagonist. Uh, for that one, because he was just such a cool character, um, having all the sort of metal stuff inside them, I thought that was really futuristic, like Terminator style. Um, the <clears throat> side characters between, <clears throat> excuse me, side characters between, uh, like Nika and Katia, I think it's a really hard one to sort of differentiate because they're very different characters. Nika is obviously a victim, and Forty Seven was protecting her, whereas in 47, the, the Rupert Friends 47, Katia was the sort of better version of him, like his sister, his biologically advanced clone. So um, it's just very hard to compare the two sort of sidekick characters in that regard. But I think for overall just likability, I think I'd have to give it to Nika because she's just more, more of a personality, whereas Katia was very cut and dry, but I suppose that's what she's supposed to be because she is a clone, but I just preferred Nika. So I'm going to give it to Nika. And also the actress I actually felt played Nika better than the, the actress who played um, Katia. I just felt like it didn't feel, it felt a bit phoned in uh, with the uh, 47 Katia's version rather than Nika's uh, Hitman the movie. Uh, this is quite hard to <laughs> get confused. You know what I mean. Uh, let's think what else. The, so, going back onto the uh, original, uh, original sort of game translate translating into film, I would I would give more points to the original Hitman than to Rupert Friends Hitman. I know that Rupert Friends Hitman had the core, you know, like they were based in a lab and they were created and they were clones, but that's all it really had. Whereas like for like Timothy Olyphant's Forty Seven had more stealth stuff, had more like callbacks to other parts of games like Saint Petersburg, Morocco, all that sort of stuff, and it felt a bit more like you were actually playing a game, like not playing the game, but you could you could have played those as missions rather than um, Rupert Friends sort of story, which you know I don't, I don't think it was a bad thing. Like I I enjoyed the Rupert Friends story, um, but I also felt like Timmy Fjolofant's character was more he's in one place, then he's in the next place, then he's in the next place, and that feels like a Hitman game. Like you start off in one place, then the other. To compare the two Dianas, uh, this is a funny one for me because obviously you don't you actually get to see Diana's face in the game uh, until later on, you know, Absolution. But if you want to talk about like pre-digital, you only ever hear her voice or see her in the shadows. And that's a good representation of the original game uh, to the original film. Uh, and then in Rupert Friends' version, obviously we do get to see her face. But um, that's sort of more towards the the newer game. So the newer game. So it's kind of like a, a toss-up between the two. Like, who who's better? That's a hard one to decide. We, I mean, I think that I think it, I don't know if it was the original voice. I think it may have been. For uh forty uh, for Timothy Olyphant's forty seven, so I think just just based on that, we give it to Timothy Olyphant's forty seven film. Um, four out of ten, they both score quite actually sort of mid. The only reason for that is because there was a lot of things missed left out from from both from both films, different at different points, which um. I can understand because if you try and make a game too much like a film or a film too much like a game, it kind of, you know, where where's the line? Like you think about like films that turned into from games like uh, Assassin's Creed or um, 
Prince of Persia. They're more based, more story based, take away from the games. But whereas what the Hitman franchise has done is keep them very similar and very close to what the game is without overlapping or without mixing in. So I give them both a seven out of ten. Um, I thought both Timothy Olyphant and Rupert Friend as a whole were very, very good in their roles. Um, Timothy Olyphant brought a lot more emotion to the Hitman character, which you know, which was a nice thing to see. Rupert Friend was very cold and like direct but that's also what we want to see so it's kind of like a, a that's hard it's a very hard thing to decide between both therefore i give them both seven out of ten uh, i thoroughly enjoy both game uh, both films and i always enjoy the games so so win-win for me i just enjoy it uh anyway i thought you hope you liked those, that little brief uh well not really brief but you know a uh, brief sort of uh review on both the both the films, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.